Welcome to Fading Memories, a supportive podcast for those of us caring for a loved one with memory loss. Um, so with me today is a nice young man. His name is Akam Dillon. He is a senior in high school in Richmond, Virginia, and he and his family helped care for his grandmother, and that led him down the path to wanting to do brain research. So thanks for joining me. And Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. So first, tell us a little bit about your grandmother. I know she passed away when you were 12. Yeah. So she had Alzheimer's, correct? Mm-hmm. So okay. she was diagnosed when I was around five. And she was in India at the time. And both my parents were living in Richmond by that point. And so she, we moved her from India to Richmond. And we took care of her at home for seven years. For about the last three to four years, we had almost a 24 hour nurse with her at all times. And at the end of the seventh year, it just got really bad for her. And yeah, being a young child, it was pretty traumatic to see happen like that. I remember when my parents first told me it was Alzheimer's, I just assumed that that was a disease that all old people got that every old person lost their memory and forgot who they were eventually. And that's just what I thought life was. I thought that happened to everybody. Hmm. But then when I really started looking into it after she passed away, I realized that this wasn't normal. No, it's definitely not normal. Memory issues when you're a senior are generally not normal. There are normal ones, and you can look at those up on the Alzheimer's Association website, which is alz.org. I love their website because it's so short, unlike yeah. all of mine. <laughs> <laughs> so that led you down the path. You're, you're graduating from high school during a pandemic when graduation is a like pat on the, a virtual pat on the back and here's your <laughs> diploma in the mail. <laughs> I'm so sorry about that. I, I don't know if I mentioned in our previous conversation, I'm actually a professional photographer and I photograph a lot of high school seniors or I did not this year. <laughs> so I, I really acutely feel the pain for you guys not having a traditional graduation ceremony, as cheesy as they are. <laughs> it's still a big deal. You need to do it. So hopefully, hopefully you guys will get to do it at some point, but, mm -hmm. but you have, we'll see big, what happens. Yeah. We have, you have big ambitions for your future. So tell me about those. Yeah. So around after, shortly after my grandmother passed away, I, as a 12 year old found Google and started researching a lot about what Alzheimer's was. And I realized and I found out that it was a disease that nobody really knows about, that there isn't a cure for. And being the ambitious little 12 year old I was, I was like, I'm gonna cure Alzheimer's, that's what I'm gonna do. And since then, that's been my goal and my mission. And I'm hoping to get into med school after college and then become a neuroscientist and hopefully be a part of the cure for Alzheimer's. Yeah, just a little small goal, right? <laughs> <laughs> so that's led you in the interim to create a fundraising program that might not quite be the right, right word. And you reached out to me because we're all in the shelter in place mandates. You're not able to do your fundraising quite the same as you were before. And mm -hmm. so tell us what you've been doing and how you hope to morph that into something different going forward until we're, until we have a new normal that we like better. <laughs> so I'd say I really started on my current path about the end of my sophomore year, about in the spring. Uh, I reached out to my local chapter of the Alzheimer's Association and basically said, what can I do to help? And they said that what a lot of people try to do is fundraise for, to raise money for Alzheimer's research and at-home care. And so I, I'm a really big soccer fan. I play very seriously. I might play in college next year. We'll see what happens. But my uh, first thought was to hold a soccer tournament and see how many of my ex-teammates, my new teammates, how many of my childhood friends would participate in it, charge them $10, $15 put them in teams and then we can just play throughout the day and see how many businesses and then vendors will come out, support us, donate stuff for the raffle and we'll see how it goes. And so that small little thing ended up raising over $5,000 for us. And 
the all, the, our chapter, the Alzheimer's Association, let me know that I was the second largest fundraiser for the chapter that year. And they really, it just really took off from there. Since, since then, I've been speaking at maybe one event every two weeks for the Alzheimer's Association. I've been interviewed on NBC News about my fundraisers and promoting The Longest Day, which is one of the Alzheimer's Association's biggest events. I've been interviewed by different reporters for the Alzheimer's Association, and I've met with various people from different levels of hierarchy in the Alzheimer's Association, including Dr. Heather Snyder, which is, she's the vice president and senior chief of research for the association. So she came down to Richmond last year and was apparently had heard a lot about me, which was very humbling in my experience. But apart from that first fundraiser, I did it again last year. We raised again over $5,000, bringing our total to roughly $15,000 in two events. And I've just been wanting to make this as big as possible and raise as much money for Alzheimer's research. And we were planning on doing it again in June, but with the current situation, we can't really do that. So I thought with the extra time I have in between online classes, I make a social media account and try to get as wide of an outreach as possible, not just for the people in Richmond, but people around the country. So it doesn't have to be a fundraiser just for people in the greater Richmond area. It could be a fundraiser for the Alzheimer's Association nationwide. So three days ago, this past Saturday, I started the social media account, which is tagged at 3v3FORALZ, 3v3 for ALZ. And right now we're currently over 1,200 followers. We've been getting incredible support and a, I can't speak words right now, just incredible support from people across the country, people who I don't even know, who I don't even know how they heard about the account or following it and just sending me messages on both that account and my personal account, just giving me so much, so much validation for what I'm doing in my mission, thanking me for what I'm doing when I'm trying to reiterate to them that I'm doing this for us. So no grandmother, no grandfather, no father, no mother has to go through the pain of watching their loved ones or themselves forget who they are, what they love to do and their family. That's really what my mission is. And I'm hoping to spread that to as many people as possible. Well, that's totally awesome. Cause um, I think I told you my mom passed away three weeks ago and mm -hmm. it was hard discovering oh she was a very creative person and three years two and a half years ago i realized the holidays are coming she would be really devastated if she knew she didn't have a gift for the grandkids and i walked her through a very simple craft project very very simple i believe a toddler could a preschooler could for sure do it <laughs> It was a very big struggle for mom and it was, it was hard because I kept thinking, what is the problem? Like, this is easy. And I, you know, it's easy to look back now and say, okay, well, if I had known then that we were two and a half years away from the end, it might've made more sense. And so sometimes with this disease, you kind of feel like you're chasing your tail, trying to catch up to where mm -hmm. they're at. So you can be like, oh, okay, I understand where you're at so I can help you by doing X. And as soon as you figure that out, they're off somewhere else. It's very, <laughs> very frustrating. And she did not remember who I was. I suspected that was the case, but the first year she was in the memory care, they had a family, like they called it a harvest buffet, I think, but they had basically a Thanksgiving party and it was on my actual birthday. And so oh, I wow. of course went and she's like, so what are you doing here? And it's like, she was always very hostessy and, what have you been up to lately? And what are you doing here? And how can I help? And so I said, well, you know, today's a really special day. It's a, it's a big birthday today. And she goes, oh, it is. And I'm like, yeah, it's mine. She goes, oh, it is. And I said, you know, it's, oh no, I, before I said it was mine, I'm like, well, it's November 17th. Do you remember whose birthday is November 17th? She's like, no. And I'm like, mm, that's kind of, <laughs> that's what I thought. <laughs> and because I suspected it, it wasn't painful or anything. And it was kind of humorous because her neighbor slash friend kept forgetting that she'd had dessert. And so she had three. It was like, I kept remember thinking, 
dang, if I just look at that many desserts, I'm going to put on weight. And you've eaten three of them. <laughs> so, you know, it was like, there's, there's humor and, you know, there's, there's sad times, but it's, you know, it's definitely, it is a very ambitious goal to want to cure Alzheimer's so that people like me don't have to, to go through what we've gone through and you and your family mm -hmm. and you have any, I know you were young. So do you have any of those funny memories of your grandmother or? Was she too so, so far I'd in the say, day? <laughs> uh, some really fond memories I have is that she's always been a very like caring person, like whether she knew the person or not. So I don't even remember if she remembered who I was, but I was walking down the hallway at my house and she, we had a little gate in front of her door so she couldn't wander out anywhere. And so she was standing at the gate and she's like, Hi, uh, how are you? Come on in, Akum. Come on. And we just talked about random nonsense for a solid two hours. And she taught me a little game that you play with your hands where you close up one of your, one of your hands inside your other hand and you have to try to, the other person has to try to find the middle finger. <laughs> and that was something I was just awe inspired by as a seven year old, just trying to figure out which finger is the middle finger and just pick it out. And I was doing that non-stop with her until she passed away and that's just something i'll always remember okay now i'm going to be playing that game with myself <laughs> <laughs> see and those are and you know you think about it and it's like that's actually a, a fairly interesting cognitive challenge so it's, yeah. the more people i talk to i'm just amazed at what people living with alzheimer's retain like mm -hmm. i have a friend who is caring for her dad now he has lily body dementia so somewhat different he can, uh, he's 93 and he still reads. Wow. It's like, really? Wow. My mom's visual <laughs> processing was so bad that while she had the knowledge of reading, what her eyes saw, her brain just scrambled it up into, I don't know what. So reading was not something she did. She didn't connect with pictures on my cell phone or she didn't track with TV shows. So it was like, Anything that was visual just didn't really stick, but relationships did. She she was like your grandmother. She was always she was always telling the people, the residents that lived with her, well, you you just let me know if I can be of help. But I would hear her say that, and I'd be like, yeah, that'd be funny to watch. You know? <laughs> kind of like a sarcastic humor. I'd be like, yeah, let's let's see how that'll work. <laughs> so it's really kind of cool. So now, how do you plan to move the fundraiser online? We talked about that the other day. I realized we didn't bring that up. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been having a lot of meetings with some of the people who work at our local chapter of the Alzheimer's Association. I was on a call with them yesterday, actually, and I'll be on another one with them tomorrow. And some ideas that I had thought of that we could do online is hold a series of challenges or tournaments uh, with video games or with basketball or whatever it might be, things that can keep people active or just not just sitting in their room on their phone all day. So one idea that me and my friends came up with would be playing the very popular video game Call of Duty Modern Warfare and just doing a five versus five tournament series, brackets, NCAA March Madness style. And the winning team would get a prize from the Alzheimer's Association and a shout out on our account something like that. And you could do that with a variety of different things. You could do a TikTok challenge. You could play FIFA. You could play whatever video game you wanted. And then more active activities we could be doing is something that the NBA has been incorporating recently by having a horse competition from each other person, each, each participant's own home where they do a specific basketball shot or trick shot. And then the next person has to emulate it at their own home and just have that cycle continuously going until there's one person left who would be the winner. So there's so many different ideas that we could do and incorporate for these fundraisers. And by having as many people following the account and aware of the account as possible, the more people that could participate in it, the more people that they could potentially tell to spread the account even more. And in the end, raising as much awareness for Alzheimer's and as much money for research. It would definitely need money for research. I've been part of our state advocacy day. Have you done one of those yet? Yes. Okay. Those are kind of fun, huh? Yeah, very. I, I have lived in California my whole life. I've been to Sacramento multiple times. I don't ever remember having gone in the Capitol building, probably because I always go on the weekends and normal things <laughs> like that. 
And so 2019 was my first advocacy day and then 2020 was my second. And then 2019 was my first walk to end Alzheimer's. So it's like I jumped in all, I jumped in pretty hardcore with the association pretty early yeah. on after my dad passed away. So it's, they're great people. Mm -hmm. So do we have any, any other things we want to talk about before we go? I know this is like a little short, but that's okay. We're going to get this out real <laughs> quick so that um, I think I'm going to make it an H IGTV video too. I've been thinking about doing awesome. more of those. And this one's short enough. I think I, I think I can make that happen. <laughs> <laughs> And then have you contacted any of your Rotary Clubs, any of the service clubs in Richmond, Virginia? So I talked to my contacts within the Alzheimer's Association, and they'll be, they're reaching out and communicating them with them right now. Because I think the Rotary Clubs, they're not doing Zoom meetings while we're in quarantine. I don't know Mine why. Is. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we'll see where that road leads us, and hopefully that can help. Yeah, because we even had a speaker in our meeting yesterday, a gal – that's getting her Eagle Scout, which is weird to me because I have photographed Eagle Scouts for years, like more years than you've been around. Make me feel old. <laughs> and so like a girl Eagle Scout, I know it's still new, but it's like that just kind of tossed me. I was like, okay, that's a little strange, but she wants, she's doing senior pen pals for one of the assisted living communities here in town. There's 118 okay. residents and she wants to have each one of them, have get actual letters in the mail. So she's working on that that's for awesome. her project. So that's kind of, kind of cool. I love it. I love the creativity from your generation being able to, you know, she was coming up with an Eagle Scout project, the pandemic happens and it's like, well, she wanted to do something more than put up a flagpole or build a bench. And I think her project is fantastic. And I think yours is fantastic. It sounds like fun. My daughter is a gamer, so I'm totally familiar with, like, online tournaments. <laughs> <laughs> um, what is the name of that game? This, the game that's based in a pizza parlor. The uh, oh, f f uh, Five Nights at Freddy's? Oh, yeah. yeah. Her fiancé has done, like, a 24-hour scare challenge. Um, oh, wow. scares I can do for that cares. at all. Yeah. <laughs> it was <laughs> funny. <laughs> I tried playing it on my phone, and I quit after maybe 10 minutes oh he played it on the computer wow so, yeah <laughs> i forgot what he was raising money for but he did that a couple times so and he's not in your generation he's in mine so um because <laughs> he's a no i think he's an old millennial yeah he's a millennial i'm a gen xer so um it's just it's really cool to see the creativity and the ideas and hopefully you'll be part of the finding the first survivor that they're hoping to find in 2025, mm -hmm. which would put you what your first year of medical school. Yes. Okay. Well, you're, Hopefully. I know you're active with the association, so you'll be a part of that as much as possible. Have you <laughs> decided where you're going to college in the fall? If it's not via zoom? I have not. I'm, I have, I think seven more days left to decide or nine more days. I have to decide by May 1st. Okay. Yeah. Are you I'm leaning towards anyone right in spe specific? Uh, so I've got a couple options. I'm deciding between Case Western Re Reserve University and the University of Pittsburgh, uh, mainly because both are one of a couple of the best in the country for neuroscience for undergrads. And then I'm also considering the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Well, options are good, and hopefully you'll be actually going. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so too. Don't we Although all? <laughs> I have I have read an article recently that applies to people like you, where now they've realized I think they're thinking that one of the solutions, and there's air quotes on that, to the high cost of college is to have like two options, and one of them would be online, like what you've been doing with your last of your high school year. And then, then there would be like the full on campus experience, which obviously is what we're doing now. So it'd be kind of interesting to see what happens in the next few years. <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of lean. Still be able to go to campus. Yeah, I was like, that's. I I I went to San Francisco State, and which is only about an hour ish from where I grew up. So it was just far enough away from home that nobody dropped in, no unexpected <laughs> parents. 
that would have been horrible. And, but it was, and it was close enough. Like I could drive home and go to my regular hairstylist and, you know, you didn't have to like find new doctors and all that stuff. So that was kind mm -hmm. of a nice balance, but that dorm experience is, I think so unique because you're still kind of relying on your parents and you're still kind of independent. It's like, it's just this special time when you're kind of in, you know, it's just a special time. So mm -hmm. I, I'm looking, I'm hoping that you have that experience in full. So thank you. You're welcome. And I will definitely get this out this week. And like I said, I've done an IGTV video before. I just have to remind myself how to make that happen. <laughs> <laughs> so many technologies and it's all, it's all good. So if I can do anything for you besides this to help you with your fundraiser, let me know. I'm hoping that we're still having our walk walks in October. Do you, mm -hmm. when, when do you guys do, do yours in October? Yeah. It's either October or November. One of those two. Yeah. The San Francisco walk is like the first Saturday of November. Ours, there's one in my county and then there's one in the county that's part of the legislative advocacy I do for the association. And so okay. I might end up going to three in a row. <laughs> but I'm only going to raise money for one. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'd either have to raise money for one or split my fundraising into three. So <laughs> right now I haven't had time to think about that though. So good for you that you're still on top of that. You're motivating me to start thinking about how to raise money for the walks we better have in October. I hope they're not <laughs> virtual. God, that'd be boring. <laughs> that, that would be awful. <laughs> like, walk to Alzheimer's on the treadmill. Ugh, no. <laughs> well, thank you so much, and good luck with your fundraising and your schooling. And like I said, reach out to me if we can do anything else for you. I will. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Have a good day. Be sure to follow me on social media so that we can have a circle of help for everyone.